Hey, so today I'm going to be showing you how to read my patterns. So I've been meaning to make this video for a while. I realized kind of recently I never really explained to you how to read my patterns and I always put them in the description of all my Rainbow Loom tutorials, but I don't know how helpful they are if you don't know how to read them. So today I'm going to be showing you how to read my patterns and um, I don't think my patterns are complicated to read. They make sense to me, but then again, I'm the one who writes them, so of course it makes sense to me. So I just thought I would do a quick video showing you how to read my patterns so that way hopefully you can have an easier time making my design. So like I said, um, I always leave the pattern to any of my designs in the description of my videos. If you want to know where you can find them, that's where. Just go to whatever tutorial you want to make. Um, whatever design... I'm saying this backwards. <laughs> go to whatever video of the design you want to make and if you look in the description there should be a pattern. There only isn't for a couple of my really old videos, but most most of my tutorials have the pattern in the description. I'm gonna flip to my hands and show you how to read my patterns. So this is the notebook I keep all my patterns in and it's a hedgehog notebook. I don't know why I feel the need to show you the cover, but there's a cover. And basically this notebook has all of my patterns in it and I'm gonna show you how, how to follow them. So yeah, I actually don't have too much to say. I know I babbled a little longer for the intro than I probably should have, but let's get into the patterns and how to read them. Okay, so I got my hook and then some bands and a C-clip just so I can show you all the steps and stuff. Ignore my handwriting. I sometimes also make typos. I usually don't care what I'm writing in here because this book is literally just for myself. No one ever sees this book. Sometimes I do send out patterns from here, but um, it's very rare. So I'll show you on my phone as well. Oh shoot, I forgot my phone. Um, I'll show you on my phone how they are written in the description, but for the video, we're going to follow them for my notebook because this is going to be easier to see than a screen. So let me go grab my phone though. So I'm just gonna be showing you like this. So basically, if you go to any of my videos and which one should we go to? I guess we'll go to the strawberry because this is the strawberry pattern we have right here. So if you go to the strawberry and I always just pause the video because I don't want to see the ad, but it would help me if you would watch the ads because I know like now if more people are gonna be following my patterns, I won't get as much money from ads, which kind of sucks, but it's, it's nice to get paid for Rainbow Loom because it's something I like to do. Not important, I start rambling. Um. But if you go to the description of any of my videos, you will see, usually I'll do it like this. So this will just be like some of my thoughts on the design. Then we'll have the links to my Etsy, TikTok, and all that. And then there'll be the band count. And like he, right here, see, I put like in parentheses. Usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll put in parentheses like any extra information I want to tell you. So this is actually a good, really good one to show you with because you can see have pattern and then in parentheses, this is just telling you basically that if you're making it dipped in chocolate, um... Then there's some like slight difference in the steps. Um, and if you're not, you just do, you just ignore that one step. That's all I'm saying in this basically. And then we have the pattern. So every single, it, usually my patterns will look like this and you can see it's the exact same in my notebook. So it starts with like tripled cat band. Where is it over here? Yeah, see, tripled cat band. So basically the way I do it in the description is I will like tab every time it's a new step. So that's that. And basically, whatever's in parentheses is how many um, loops you should have at the end of each row. I think the parentheses is sometimes what confuse some people, but the number of parentheses is if you count your loops around, that's how many you should have. You know, if you ever can't understand like a piece of the pattern or if I do something whack, um, you can always watch the video. So that's, what's, that's what that's for. But yeah, like I said, we're going to be following this strawberry pattern today. Well, we're not actually going to follow it. I'm going to skip around because... I do a lot of the same stuff, but it's just once you get it, you'll get it. So most of my patterns start with whatever number of times you need to wrap the cat band. For the strawberry, it's three times. All that means is like what... I guess if you follow other patterns, it's like the magic ring. I just hate that no one ever says like how many times to wrap the band. So I usually just start with how many times to wrap the band. Um, there's very few designs that have you wrap it like... Um, like most patterns are three times but there are a few of mine that do do two times so the first step for this one is just to wrap it three times and then the next thing it says is five stitches usually i'll write five stitches in cab band but because this one this book is just for me i just wrote five stitches um but all that basically means is how many stitches you're going to put in to the cab band well that's kind of obvious and then in parentheses, it says five. And what that means is that, that if you count your loops at, after this, you should have five. So I'll just do that real quick. I'm sorry if the lighting's a little weird. Um, I usually film Loom videos on my phone, but um, we're filming on my tablet today because I know I'm going to have to edit this video. You should have five stitches at this point. So if we count, starting the one on our hook, 
it'll just have one, two, three, four, and five. I'm sorry, I feel like it's blurry. We're having camera issues, okay. <laughs> and here's the most important part of following my pattern. So I have followed a couple other tutorials and um, I've noticed that most people will put their C-clip on this loop, so this one. But I've just been doing this since forever. I put my C-clip on the first one. So I just finished putting all my stitches in the cap band. I always put my C-clip after I do this one. So I'll go into the first loop. I'll make a stitch. And then this is where my C-clip goes. So in all of my patterns, especially ones that have a lot of color placement, you're going to want to make sure you pay place your C-clip on the same... Um, this same band as me but if you ever follow my patterns that have color placements or anything you're going to want to make sure you put your c-clip here because everything else in the pattern will be thrown off especially with how i count and everything if you don't have your c-clip in the right spot so that's important so i do this a lot also right increase everything also notice how there's like two crs those are the typos i'm talking about um, but i usually don't care because this is just for me but you get to see my horrible typo um so increase everything basically just means what it sounds like. It's basically we just do increases all the way around. And I always try to use the same terms in my tutorials as in um, my patterns. So that way hopefully you guys can figure this out. So this step is pretty obvious. Um, what all increase everything means if you're reading it in my patterns though is you just do increases all the way around. Also sorry if you keep seeing my camera refocus. I'm trying to sort out if everything looks okay. Like I said, looking at my pattern again, we just finished increasing everything. In parentheses, it has a 10. So what that means is we should have 10 loops. So if you count around, you should have 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Like that. The next step that a lot of my designs have, or a lot of my earlier designs have, is increase every other. And what this means is basically you alternate between doing a single stitch and an increase. I don't know why writing it this like this makes sense to me, but I feel like it's too late to change it now. Also, ignore how these numbers are. See, this is what happens sometimes in my pattern book. I'll count once, and then I'll come back to it, and I counted wrong. It's actually 15 that should be in the parentheses, but I never fixed it. Um, but yeah, so if you see in my patterns, increase every other. All it means is you're going to do a single stitch, and then an increase, and a single stitch, and then an increase. Basically, you alternate between doing a single stitch and an increase. It's also important to know... That usually when I do increase every other, I'll count this first one with a C-clip on it as the single stitch. So the next one's the increase. And I always do this. Decreasing is the same as increasing. So right here it says decrease every other. So it would be exactly the same as increase every other, except for you decrease. So you would alternate between single stitch, decrease, single stitch, decrease, single stitch, decrease. And as you can see, decrease still closed usually means decrease everything. Um, usually it's the last step, so I usually just write it like this. Um, but yeah, so that's that's how these are similar. So the other thing you'll see a lot of my patterns that happens in a lot of my designs is I'll have decrease every third or increase every third. You can see that they're both here. And what that means is it's very similar to um, increasing every other, but the way I like to think about it, I think I've explained this before. What that means is you do two single stitches and then you increase and the reason or decrease, you know, whichever. But the reason I wrote it like that is because the way I thought of it is like you do one single stitch and you do two is also a single stitch. And then the third stitch you do is either an increase or a decrease, which is why I wrote it like that. It made sense in my brain. You would do one single stitch and then two single stitch. And this is basically how my brain worked with this. So we did one, two. So the next one's the third loop. And that's where you do your increase or decrease will increase because why not? That's how that is. Also happens. So basically, once we get to increase every like third or whatever, I've done it in some patterns where I think I've done like increase every fourth or increase every fifth. It's the same thing. Do So if it's increase every fourth, instead of doing two and then increasing on the third or like the third stitch or whatever we do, if it's increase every fourth, you do three single stitches and then you'd increase on the fourth stitch you do is kind of how I think about it. After you increase on the third, the process just starts again. So you do two, like, um, 
single stitches and then you increase and you just do that all the way around and once again you'd follow the number to check how many loops you have if you did it correctly on the number that's in parentheses um these numbers might be wrong but this is not a tutorial so don't have to worry about that see this one has one so my triceratops also look i drew a little triceratops but you'll see it has increased every fourth and then whatever number in parentheses so like I said, if it ever says increase every fourth, it just means three single stitches and then you increase. If it said increase every fifth, it would be four single stitches and then you increase. I hope that makes sense and helps you out. And it's same thing with decreases. So if it ever says like decrease every third or whatever, it's the same thing. So the other thing I'll write a lot is I'll put like one row normal. And basically um, what that means is it's just single stitches all the way around. As you can see from like on this pattern to increase every fourth to one row normal, the number of loops stays the same. So all one row normal means is just single stitches all the way around. Also, you can see the lovely thing I do in all my patterns is I'll be like, do the weird leg thing, five loops per leg. Like, that's very helpful. So I usually write it out better for you guys. But when I write stuff for myself, I'm like, you know what to do. <laughs> just thought I would point that out. But yeah. So that's most of like the basic stuff. I guess I just have to color how I do cover how I do color placement in my patterns because that's the other thing that I know can be a little confusing. So let me get a pattern. So I just want to go to a pattern to show you guys once more how to read my patterns. So I'll also do this. So this is like the main body and then I'll put like legs and then here's where like this goes down. And this is the alpaca pattern. So I have where to start adding fluff and then I'll put in parentheses like stop fluff. Yeah, let me find another one that has more color placement because color placement is the only thing in my patterns that's a little bit different. So let me find a design that has color placement. This is a good one. So in this one, which is the penguin one, you can see we start with a doubled cat band on this one. This one's actually really good to see how I do it. See, I'll put like six stitches in cat band and there's a little six. Increase everything. Increase every third to where it's normal. And right here I have... Um, and I'll usually put, because see, some designs, whenever I change colors, I'll put slip stitch every time you flip colors. And if you don't know what a slip stitch is, let me show you, because I know, I always try to cover that in my videos, but I feel like it's sometimes confusing. But what I consider a slip stitch is, so we have another color, we'll go into the next loop, and this is what a slip stitch is. So you just pull it through everything, and then you put the back one over the front one. And you only do this when you flip colors and you want it to have that like clean color flip. And I'll usually flip colors on the first one. So if ever in my patterns I tell you to change colors and I tell you to slip stitch, you're going to want to do it on the one that has a C-clip on it. This, the, this one with a C-clip is the one I consider the first loop. That's also important. I'm also sorry if anyone texted me and you saw that. Just ignore it. Um, but this is always the first loop or I consider it. So this is the one you will flip colors on. So you will pull it through everything on your hook. Push the back one over the front one. And then that's when you flip colors for the whole row. But in my penguin design, this is one of the ones where you do not slip stitch when you flip colors. So you can see I wrote do not slip stitch when you flip colors. Just switch to band, what band color you're using. So I'll usually specify. Um, okay, so this is another thing that might confuse people with. Um, my patterns so I usually do this with sum sums but see I have eight rows normal and then I have written out all the rows and where to place the colors because basically it's eight rows of single stitches but you do a lot of different stuff with the colors so row one just says all skin color but then on row two I have yellow on the third through the 11th rest skin color so I want to show you how I count that because this is the only other part you really need to know for my patterns is how I count so like I said the one that has a c-clip on it is always going to be um, the first loop. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And basically all the way around, you just keep going. So on this pattern, it says third through the 11th would be yellow. So you'd start adding yellow on the third. So this is the first. This one would be the second. And then the next one would be the third. And that is when you would start adding um the yellow or whatever because it was a cat noir pattern so you'd start adding yellow all the way until the 11th and the way you would count that is like say this is the third so you just go so this would be three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and then that's when you you would stop on the so that's how i do that uh the color placement's always kind of confusing i know i'm sorry about that but that's how i write it also there's one thing i do want to point out with decreases uh i don't know 
if I have any specific examples, let me just go to a random one. We'll go to the strawberry again. So with the decreases, one thing that sometimes happens is the decrease will land on the C-clip and it really depends on what design it is, whether or not I do the decrease. And the way you're going to want to tell whether or not I do the decrease, so if the decrease ever lands on where the C-clip is, um, you just want to be careful with this because I always do this and I never write that I do this, I just do it. But if the, C the decrease lands on the one that has a C-clip on it, check the number of loops you're supposed to have and then count around. And basically, if you're at the correct number of loops before the decrease, then you don't decrease on the one with a C-clip on it. But if you're not at the correct number of the of loops at the decrease and you have like one extra, that means you do the decrease. Um, yeah, that's just something I do. Usually though, if you have one extra when we're decreasing and it's towards the end of the design, it's not the end of the world if you have one extra. But I do occasionally do that where it's like if the decrease will land on the C-clip, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It really does depend on the pattern and you're just going to want to check the number of loops I have that I've written in the parentheses. Okay, so another thing I do, so you can see that right here, it says, that's supposed to say four rows. Um, I had a typo, but it says four rows increasing every third. And then in parentheses is the number of, um, number of loops you should have after each row. So there's four rows. You can see there's four numbers in parentheses. And as you can see here, I also wrote slip stitch every time we switch colors from here until the end of the pattern. So I'll usually specify when you need to slip stitch to flip colors. Oh, that's the other thing we need to color. So half rows. So what I call it half row is basically usually what I mean by a half row is you're only going to grab one half of the loop. So let me get a different color. We have some white here. What a half row is. And whenever it says half row, I'll usually specify which side of the loop. Yeah. So right here it says um, half row only stitch on the inside half. So whenever it says half row, it's going to be either the inside half or the outside half you stitch on. And I'll usually specify which. But all it means is you will just go around doing whatever stitches. You Normally it's single stitches. Um, but you only either grab the inside half or the outside half of loops. Like that. I'll also occasionally, I've been recently doing stuff like this, which just says increase one on the top. And usually, this is for my bronchiosaurus um, pattern. And what I basically mean like that is you're just going to want to commit. Because obviously most Lumigurmi things are round. So you're just going to want to commit to one part being the top of your design. And you'll just increase one on the top. And it's just like later, you'll see it has decreased two on the top. So you're going to want to decrease two on whatever looks like the top. That's all I mean by that. Oh, see, that's the other thing I do occasionally. So occasionally, um, some designs will go to one end and then we'll turn around and go to the other end. So whenever we do that, um, I'll put a little turn in parentheses. Also, this is my uh, stegosaurus design. And you can see here, I wrote in parentheses how many single stitches I did till I increased on the top. So usually, the basic on how to read my pattern, if you're still confused, is each one of these rows will be like a different step and if there's anything in parentheses it's usually just me trying to help you out with extra information um i did go through a little bit on each of what of these mean i do plan on updating my lumigurmi basics video soon so that way i can get more into detail about all of this but i hope this helped you understand how to read my patterns a little bit more and yeah i guess we'll flip back to me i think that's all i have to say Okay, so I hope that helped you understand how to read my patterns more. I tried my best to explain and do a little bit of an example with um, bands, but I don't know how helpful that was. I hope it was helpful. Uh, I try to use the same terms in my video as I do in my patterns, so hopefully you guys have kind of been catching up onto that as well. But I really want you guys to be able to understand my patterns because I put them there for a reason. And yeah, it does take me a little while to write up the patterns as well. So I hope this helped you understand them. If you have any more questions about how to read my patterns or if I've ever wrote something really whack, um, tell me in the comments and I'll try to help you out with what I meant by that. And just remember that if my pattern's ever confusing, you can always check the video.
to see how to do things because i know i do some whack stuff sometimes and i don't even know how to write it out but i try my best so subscribe if you want to see more videos from me i have some more tutorials and things coming really soon actually um so subscribe if you want to see any of that check me out on instagram if you'd like to see what i'm up to i always post more on instagram than on here i have my main account which is ginger cell and then my spam account well not my spam account it's like my spam slash art account i post more lifey things on there um which is my other account ginger cute four if you want to check me out over there and i have a tiktok that i post on randomly which is also ginger cell as well as my Etsy, which will all be linked in the description. I think that is it for this video. I really hope this helped you understand my patterns. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, just ask me. Feel free to ask me in the comments. I think that is it for this video, and I will see you hopefully soon in the next one. Bye. <laughs>